Okay, welcome back everyone for another exciting video in our uh, C++ or our continuing C++ tutorials. Now, in this video I'm going to show you how to compute simple and compounding interest. Now in this case, we're going to be including uh, a library called CMath. And CMath is going to allow us to use exponents. Now before I begin, I want to touch on something really quick. The order of operations in C++ is not the PEMDAS that you learned in high school or college or wherever you learned it. It's actually parentheses, uh, which actually contains exponents. So I'm just going to put E in there. MMDAS. Now, in this case, parentheses obviously come first. Exponents, which I'll show you more about later here. And then modulo, multiplication, and division. These three are all at the same priority. So as a result, they'll, they'll go from left to right. Meaning if a division comes before a, uh, a multiplication, the division will go first. If a multiplication comes first, it'll go before division. So those three, you have to be really careful. Always use parentheses if you're not sure what's going to happen. And then addition and subtraction are the same thing as modulo, multiplication, and division. Addition and subtraction are at the same priority, and again, these go from left to right. So if an addition comes before a subtraction, it'll go first. Subtraction before an addition, it'll go first. Um, one other thing to note, modulo, which isn't really used too much, that's when you divide and have a remainder. So an example is, say you have the number 10 modulo 2, in this case, it's going to equal 0, because 10 divided by 2 doesn't yield you any remainder. This is actually how you check for an even number, is modding by 2 and if it's equal to 0. So with all that said, I'm going to declare a couple of variables. I'm going to do int, um, and I'm just going to do i rate. I'm going to use that Hungarian notation that I touched on extremely briefly in a previous video. I'm going to do i time because rate can be a, a floating point number. And then I'm going to do double d rate and d principal. In this case I probably could have used an int for principal but I don't really want to because eh, we'll get into that. And d total. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt the user to enter their starting amount of money. So enter how much money you'd like to invest. We're going to see in for D principal. And then we're going to see out. We're going to put a new line character in. And we're going to then ask, um, what is the rate of interest? Okay, same idea. C in for D rate. And lastly is C out. Another new line character, which is that backslash N. How much money would you like to invest? Er, I'm sorry. We can tell who is just reading the top line. How long will you be investing the money in years? So in this case, we're going to see in for I time. And the reason why we we're making I time an int is because we're always going to have a whole number. Uh, I mean, I suppose we could make it a double and allow them to say 2.5 years or something along those lines, but we can we can talk more about that next video. Um, I have a feeling this one's going to be pushing up on the 15-minute uh, 
limit. Actually, we'll talk about that two videos from now because I already have the fourth one done because this one got rejected last time uh, for being too long. Go figure. So, okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to set total equal to, and this is how we assign uh, any variable. So in this case, d total equals, um, we're going to do d principal multiplied by d rate multiplied by i time. One quick thing we have to mention unless the user, assume the user is entering in something like 5%. Number one, we can't let them enter in the percent yet. We can talk about how to do that later. Now, when somebody enters in 5, that's not 5%. Mathematically speaking, we need to divide this number by 100. So what we're going to do to allow that percent, because percent really means out of 100, uh, to be how we want it, we need to do d rate, which is our variable holding the rate, divided by equals 100. And what I actually used here is called a compound operator. And these can save you a little bit of time and a lot of confusion. Because what that actually means is d rate equals d rate divided by 100. So these two statements are exactly the same. So with that much being said, what we're going to do is we're going to see out our total. And in this case, that's just going to be our uh, interest, which isn't really what we're looking for. Um, so let's say we start off with $10,000. Our rate of interest is uh, 10 a year, and we're investing for two years. Now we should be expecting $12,000. But in this case, it's 2000 because we only did the interest. So what we're actually going to want to output here is principal plus interest. Oop, and I screwed up because I forgot to keep it in Hungarian notation. Because this isn't how I code in my personal Time. I actually use very different variable names. So we're going to type in 10,000, again, 10% interest, two years, and there it is. That's the 12,000 we were expecting. Now I want to touch very briefly on how to uh, do compound interest. And compounding interest is what you're going to see in the real world. So what we're going to do is we're going to take principal. Um, in this case, D principal, multiply it by, and this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Um, in C math, we actually have the, the, a way to do exponents, because the exponent operator, which is what you'd assume to be the caret, if you've ever done a, um, if you've ever used a TI-83 or any type of graphing calculator, it's always that little caret. It's not in this case. In this case, what we have to do is use what's called POW. And in POW, what we need to do is we need to take the number that we are raising to a power, in this case, D rate, and we need to raise it to the exponent, which in this case is I time. So as you can see, we're, we're taking a number. so with what we've done, it will be uh, 0 0.05 multiplied by 2. And that's not right, because what we actually have to do is we have to do 1 plus that number uh, raised to an exponent. This is actually in the earlier chapters of pretty much every book about learning C++. So we'll toss this up real quick. Uh, how much money I'd like to invest? 10,000. Rate of interest is 10 for two years, which means the first year it'll get 1,000 of interest, making it 11,000. Second year it'll get 10% on that, which is 1,100 over two years. Uh, so that means it's going to be 12,100. 
and I don't need to hit compile again. What am I doing? And there it is. 12,100 is our new total. Now, if you have any questions about what I've done here, I have to wrap this up very quickly because I think I'm running out of time. Actually, no, I'm only at 10 minutes. Um, if you have any questions about this, I know I kind of rushed through POW. Um, I want to make one quick clarification. This first number has to be either a float or a double or something like that. You cannot raise an int to an int. Um, I'll talk more about how to do that in about like uh, lesson five or six. I'll talk really quickly about uh, casting numbers and things of that nature. Um, with that said, I'm going to leave it off here. Uh, video four is already done. The variable names are going to be a little bit different because I didn't use Hungarian notation last time. Um, I just want to note that the reason I used Hungarian notation is because of this word here, time. Time is a keyword in some of our other libraries that we'll be using later. So what we want to do is when we're naming variables, we want to name it things that are just not named anywhere else. All right. And with all that said, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully you guys have taken away something from this. Please don't hesitate to subscribe, ask questions, leave comments, anything like that. All right? Have a good night.